guys, today I'm going to show you how to play in the style of Bobby Vega and similarly Cody Wright. Now what these guys do is use a pick or plectrum to make a very strong percussive self-sustaining bass line. Now what I mean by that is it creates its own groove and its own drive before you've even added it to drums and or percussion, those kind of things. Now I'm going to have to split this into a couple of parts for it to make sense. First of all, and one of the main things here is the right hand technique to be fluid and consistent. So what I've got here is a Dunlop 73mm. Now I came across these uh, researching and listening to a lot of Bobby Vegas stuff and it seems that he uses these all the time. So I figured I'd give these a go and I find that they are perfect really. Obviously try different picks, see what you've got, you don't have just to use these but I do find them to be very very good for this style. Now you might be thinking, oh this is a guitar pick. Well, picks are picks, really. Now there are some that suit certain things better than others, sure. However, what you'll find with this kind of quicker technique is that the pick being light and also not shiny, as it's easier to grip it when you're doing your 16th notes. Now, I'm actually using this in an upside down kind of position, so that the pick, if I move this guy out of the way, is pretty much sitting on my thumb, so that there's very, very little excess. So if we can flip this guy over, bit of a hard angle to get. So see that guy there, there's almost no extension of a pick showing at all, it's a very very slight amount. This makes it a lot easier to cut across the strings. Now you can use this with a thicker pick or a thinner pick if you like, but I do recommend that you give these a go for sure. 73 millimeters by, uh, these are Dunlops, and I'm using them in an upside down position, so there's not too much of this spare pick to actually kind of drag between strings. In terms of right hand position, you want to use the pad of your right hand, if you're right handed, if you're left handed, just flip everything on that, say, round to make sense. Keep that in mind, back pad of your picking hand, just right by the bridge, and then you should be in a relaxed position here, where you can quite happily skip between strings and not have to move too much. Right, let's look at the picking hand, so if you're right handed, right, if you're left handed, top at the left, but the hand that you're picking with. So with this hand in position, what we're now going to do is we're going to learn the basic rudiment for the 16th note, kind of steam train funk. fretting hand, so again if you're right handed this would be your left hand, if you're left handed we'll flip around to the right hand. What you want to do to create some of the lines and the ideas that Bobby uses and uh, people like Cody have started to utilise as well in their playing uh, is you want to look at what I refer to as open playing. Now by that I mean where previously you may have played in a sort of vertical blocky way, say uh, the normal pentatonic and major scale shapes in one position you're now going to want to sort of jump up and down the bass to get these differences in sound. And I found that was the real way to authentically pull off this kind of style. You're not staying in one position for too long. You're able to mix up and jump around the bass to get this difference in line between kind of bass line and underlying drum or percussion vibe and then also a bit of a lead thing as well. So that kind of, it's all encompassing. start incorporating some extra notes into the pattern that we've just learned. So now we want to start building a bass line. So I'm going to use G as the example again and we're going to have G at the bottom, the perfect fifth which is D, and then the octave at the top which is another G. But now we're going to start to work in that pattern from before. So again I'll do this slowly, speed it up, slow it down, speed it up. So you can hear it in context as to how it should sound when it's finished and also so that you can replay the video and go to the finer points of what I'm doing in terms of alternate picking. Now I've learned to 
put extra notes into the pattern using, in that previous example, G, D, and G. What we can start to do is take a little bit of that open playing we discussed a minute ago, getting more movement and getting more options of notes in there. And again, this is important for playing in the style because uh, people like Bobby and uh, Cody are not always sticking to these same shapes. You're mixing it up and you're moving dynamically across the neck and it holds a percussive backbeat kind of vibe as well. anything you guys aren't sure on or don't quite get or you want to know more about just let me know down below as always like share and subscribe to the channel for more bass videos and let me know in the comments what kind of things you guys want me to cover next